Welcome back to part two of the Food Photography Foundation series, where we're spending a bit of time making sure you've got the basics nailed. If you missed part one, then click here to watch that, then come back here. Inside Food Photography Academy, I've just launched the Shoot for Success course, which takes you in detail through all the foundational aspects of food photography. Each lesson has examples, and with your membership, you'll also get access to all my other online courses and our monthly live member Zoom calls, where you can get direct feedback on your images as well. So click here to check that out if you want to become a member and then let's jump right back in to today's video. Today we'll be talking about raw format and why it's essential that you're shooting raw for the best file quality and flexibility for editing. So first of all, let's talk about the difference between raw and JPEG files. JPEG files are saved in a compressed graphic format. They are compressed using lossy compression, which reduces the image quality based on the level of compression used. When you shoot in JPEG, the files are processed within your DSLR. These adjustments can make a JPEG file look better than a raw file straight out of camera, which sounds helpful, right? But not quite. JPEGs are a lossy file format. This means that when the camera makes its edits and compresses the file, those changes are burned into that image file, making them irreversible. This is called destructive editing. So every edit you make is made on a gradually worse and worse quality file, which is definitely not ideal for food photography. Raw files, on the other hand, are uncompressed, unprocessed files that contain the direct image data from the camera sensor. Rather than an image file, they're actually a list of instructions that a raw processing program such as Lightroom or Capture One or Camera Raw will interpret. They're known as lossless file formats, which means all of the data is recoverable when they are processed. So let's take a look at some of the key benefits of using raw format for your food photography. When you take a photo, the camera applies a white balance based on your settings. Whether you set a custom white balance or use a preset white balance setting like auto, tungsten, cloudy, etc. When you shoot in JPEG format, the camera applies the white balance based on your settings, but because of the lossy format of JPEGs and the fact that changes are burned in, this means you can't really change the white balance in editing. What this means is that when you edit the white balance of a JPEG file in Lightroom, it actually adds a yellow or blue filter on top of the image. So it's a very generic and not very intelligent change. With raw format, on the other hand, all of the data from the camera sensor is recorded in those instructions that make up a raw file. So even though the camera has applied the white balance to your photo based on your settings, those instructions can be changed by your raw processor to actually change the white balance of the original file, not just apply a filter on top. This means that you can play around with the white balance in post-production much more freely and you can recover far more extreme white balance mishaps with raw files. So what might seem like a disaster straight out of camera camera might actually turn into a usable photo. Of course, you still want to try and capture your image with a white balance as close as possible to what you finally want, as this makes post-processing easier, but you will have far more flexibility with a RAW file. In a JPEG file, there isn't as much data retained in the brightest and darkest areas of the photo. So when you start editing them, you'll notice the lack of quality. You're also far more limited in how much you can lift the shadows and darken the highlights without seeing visible grain in the image. Raw files, on the other hand, are absolute pros in this area. You have around two stops of exposure to play with when it comes to brightening underexposed shots and a really good amount in the highlights as well. However, completely blown out highlights are still pretty much impossible to recover in a photo. So try and avoid these as much as possible when shooting. Non-destructive editing is probably one of the biggest advantages of raw files over JPEGs. When you're making edits to a raw file, you aren't actually touching the original data. Instead, you're just telling your software how to interpret the data and how to manipulate it. So you're adding instructions on top of the information included in the raw file, meaning you can undo and redo changes without affecting the quality of the original file. On the other hand, every time you make a change to a JPEG, some of the data is lost. So each subsequent change is being made on a lower quality file. It also means you can't undo 
changes because you can't bring that original data back. In the Shoot for Success course in Food Photography Academy, I've got some examples directly comparing raw and JPEG files straight out of camera and before and after editing so you can really understand the impact each file type has. So if you're interested in seeing that, then click here to check it out. All of these reasons are why it's so important that you're shooting in raw format for your food photography. So go ahead and set your camera to raw right now. You'll find this in the menu settings of your camera. Normally you'll have the option to choose raw, JPEG or raw plus JPEG. Personally, I don't feel there's any need to shoot in raw plus JPEG if you're going to be processing your images afterwards. So I recommend just choosing raw. So that's it for part two of our foundation series. And I'll see you back here again soon for part three.